Adelaide Shoulder and Upper Limb Clinic. Innovative leaders in the diagnosis, treatment and surgery of the shoulder, elbow, wrist and hand in South Australia. Hi, my name is James McLean and I'm an upper limb surgeon based in Adelaide. I specialise primarily in shoulder, elbow, wrist and hand disorders. I'm the head of unit at the Royal Adelaide uh, Hospital Hand and Upper Limb uh, Clinic through the University of Adelaide and the Department of Orthopaedics. What I'm going to show you today is a comprehensive examination of the elbow. And the aim of that is to bring you up to a uh, medical student level so that by the end of it, you'll be able to formulate a list of differential diagnoses for potential conditions involving the elbow. So we're gonna go through a few steps involved in order to achieve this. The first thing to do is to work out what tools you're going to require. So most of the elbow examination can be performed standing. There's really only one examination component that we need an examining table for, which I'll take you through uh, later. The first thing you need to do is to introduce yourself to the patient. So, morning Danny, uh, do you mind if I examine your elbow today? That's fine. Fantastic. The second thing to do is to clean your hands with Aquium. And finally, adequately expose the patient. So with an elbow examination, we always want to have uh, exposure of the joint above and the joint below. And we'll ask uh, Daddy to remove any watches that are on the uh, examining side. In her case, her watch is on the left side, so we don't need to remove that. I now move on to the standard assessment steps involved in the examination of the elbow. Those include look, feel, move, and special tests. The elbow is slightly different to other joints though, because we combine look and move together. And in doing so, uh, we can get a lot of information so that we can then target our examination appropriately. So normally I would be standing facing Danny. However, uh, I've gone through the steps involved in the look and move uh, assessment of the elbow with Danny. And to help demonstrate those movements, I'm standing behind her. Normally I'd be standing in front of her. So the first thing that I want is to achieve the anatomical position. So Danny, can I get you to show me your hands? So in doing this, what we're able to assess for uh, is the carrying angle of the elbow. Uh, this is normally between 10 and 13 degrees from the uh, midline of the humerus. From here, I ask Danny to put her arms out to the side. Uh, this obviously requires a shoulder that has, is free of um, movement and is able to achieve this. What we're looking at here is for or any asymmetry of the movements at the level of the elbow and to ensure that the patient is able to achieve full active extension. If the patient's unable to achieve full active extension, such as a position like this, this is where I would walk forward and ask Danny, you know, are you happy if I examine your elbow? And then passively see if I can correct that uh, position. So once again, this is the difference between active and passive motion. While looking at um, Danny's face to see whether or not she's painful at all, we see whether or not I can correct that uh, position. Then I let go and see if she bounces uh, back to the original position. And that gives us an idea between active and passive range. I then ask Danny to move from that position to touch her shoulders. So that now gives us a indication of flexion once again, we want to determine the difference between active and passive. And if Danny is only able to achieve uh, flexion to around 120 degrees, I will passively see if I can correct her any further. Danny, can I get you to put your arms uh, forward and show me the back of your hands? So this is the position where I can observe uh, the skin for skin changes, any scars, any abnormal posturing of the forearm. We often see um, posterior incisions to uh, the arm. And this is best assessed from uh, the front here. Keyhole surgical scars are often on the sides just here. And those are also observed for at the same time. Danny, can I get you to put your arms in front of you with your palms facing up? So we then uh, move her into a position of full supination. So there's very little movement from here to here. That gives us an idea about her supinated position. So if Danny is able to achieve full supination, uh, that's fantastic. We don't need to assess it any further. But if she's only able to achieve 70 degrees of supination, once again, I stabilise the elbow, see if I can passively crack that any further. Danny, can I get you to turn your palms over completely? 
This is now assessing for pronation. Once again, we assess for the difference between active and passive motion. Once we've completed the look and move component of the elbow examination, we then move on to the feel or the palpation. So Danny, can I get you to face me? You put your arms by your side. I start from the medial side, work my way posteriorly, then laterally, then anteriorly. What we're feeling for are the bony prominences. So on the medial side, we're feeling for the medial epicondyle, the common flexor origin, and the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve uh, sits within the cubital uh, tunnel, and I move the elbow through an arc of extension and flexion to see whether or not there's any subluxation of the ulnar nerve. I then move to the tip of the olecranon, where the triceps inserts, to determine whether or not there's any uh, palpable olecranon uh, bursa that's enlarged, um, or whether or not there's any tenderness at the level of the um, tendon insertion. I'll just get you to face uh, this direction now, just to make it a little bit easier for us. We then move from there to the um, gutter of the um, ulnar humeral joint. This is best felt just behind the radial uh, head over the ancaneus muscle. See whether or not there's any uh, changes there or any tenderness. I then move to the lateral epicondyle, which is the bony prominence uh, that's most prominent over the lateral aspect of the elbow. Similarly, is there any pain there? I then move to the common extensor origin, similarly palpating to see whether or not there's any uh, tenderness before moving to the radiocapitella joint. The radiocapitella joint uh, is a joint, so there's movement, and often in order to determine if I'm in the right place, I'll supinate and pronate the elbow just to make sure that I'm at that articulation. Similarly, ask Danny whether or not there's any pain there. Fantastic. I then move down to the radial tunnel, which is around five centimetres distal down the forearm at the arcade of Fros. I then palpate um, deeply at that point for tenderness. Is that painful at all? A bit. Fantastic. Another positive uh, finding. I then move uh, anteriorly, which we'll talk about that later. We then move um, anteriorly. Um, there are really only two things that we're feeling for uh, anteriorly. Uh, one is for uh, the pulses, which I tend to uh, feel for at that time point, and also the biceps tendon itself. The biceps tendon, if we're concerned about um, problems with it, I actually assess that with the um, fully uh, adducted, sorry, abducted to 90 degrees with the thumb facing the ceiling. Uh, and then palpate over the top, then we're feeling for the tautness of that tendon. It's called a hook test. And that completes the palpation component. We then move on to special tests for the elbow. Fortunately, there are very few special uh, tests for the elbow. Uh, there are four. They include assessments for the ulnar nerve, stability of the elbow, and then the biceps and triceps. So special tests for ulnar nerve. We've already palpated the ulnar nerve within the cubital tunnel. What we want to know uh, is what is occurring within the cubital tunnel and then distal to the cubital tunnel. So the first thing we want to do is perform Tinel's sign. This is where we tap over the continuation of the ulnar nerve within the tunnel and then distal to the tunnel. A positive uh, response is either tingling or pain at the level of palpation. Experiencing any of that, Danny? No. no. We then move on to sensory and motor assessment of the ulnar nerve. The first thing we want to assess for is the uh, proximal cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve, and then the distal or dorsal branch of the ulnar nerve, uh, sensory branch. So can you feel me touching you here, Danny? Fantastic. And feel me touching you here. Fantastic, and is it at the same as touching you here? So we're comparing that to the radial nerve, and same as touching you here, and again to the uh, median nerve. So we then assess the motor component of the ulnar nerve. That's easiest done by asking the patient to make a star with their hand. Just make a star like that, fantastic. And then stop me from pushing your fingers together, as strong as you can, hold it there, keep it there, don't let me move it, fantastic. So we're assessing for the intrinsic muscles supplied by the ulnar nerve. We then move on to special tests for stability of the elbow, for which there are three. We're testing the varus and valgus stability and also a pivot shift test. In order to do this, 
We stand on the side of the patient. We abduct the shoulder to 90 degrees. We fully extend the uh, elbow initially and put the forearm in a full uh, pronation. We internally rotate the shoulder until it can't rotate anymore and that's a fixed point for the shoulder. We then flex the um, elbow to 25 degrees and if we're testing the lateral collateral ligament then we're putting a varus force against a medially positioned um, hand. So I stabilize the elbow in that position and then put a varus force. And a positive test is if there's opening um, of the lateral collateral uh, ligaments. To test the uh, medial collateral ligaments, the same position. So the shoulder abducted the elbow initially in full extension, full pronation of the forearm, but this time full external rotation. I similarly flex the elbow to uh, 25 degrees and this time I'm putting a valgus force against a laterally positioned hand stabilizing the elbow. Similarly I'm looking for or feeling for opening of that um, medial collateral ligament. We then move on to the pivot shift test. What I'm now going to demonstrate is the pivot shift test for posterior lateral rotator instability of the elbow. The test itself is kind of analogous to uh, doing a pivot shift test for instability of the uh, cruciate ligaments of the knee. So in order to do so, uh, we need an examining table. We have our patient, Danny, here supine. We stand behind uh, the patient and we extend the shoulder. So it requires a shoulder with full range. What we then do is we put the arm in full extension at the level of the elbow, fully supinate the uh, forearm then put a hand on the medial side of the elbow. We then want to go for a movement with a valgus force and flex the elbow, watching for a change in the contour at the level of the radio capitella joint where the radial head sits just here. And sometimes we need to put it through a couple of times in order to get the correct um, feeling of that joint. Um, and we often see a sulcus present itself just here and we'll feel the uh, radial head uh, pop in and out of its original um, articulating position. And we put the arm by the side. Final special tests for the elbow involve assessments of the biceps and the triceps. In order to assess uh, for the biceps, part of this uh, has already been completed. Uh, what we're testing for uh, is the, both the patency of the tendon itself, which we've palpated during the feel component, but also the power of the biceps uh, in both flexion and supination. So in order to do this, I ask uh, Danny to stand with your hand in front of you with your elbow at 90 degrees. Danny, can you hold your hand there, keep it there, don't let me move it. And I, try, I push uh, down against resistance and I palpate her biceps muscle, which is firing. We can also test for the strength of supination, so I ask her to hold that same position and I try and internally uh, rotate or pronate her hand against resistance. So similarly, hold it there, keep it there, don't let me move it. And I'm internally uh, rotating like so. Hold it there, keep it there, don't let me move it. Fantastic. Similarly, I, I palpate the biceps tendon. And finally, I assess uh, the triceps. For the ass proper assessment of the triceps, we want to negate gravity. So I put the shoulder at 90 degrees of abduction. I flex the elbow to 90 degrees. Um, Danny, can you hold your elbow there? Hold it there, keep it there, don't let me move it. And I'm pushing uh, in a flexion uh, position and she's firing her triceps against resistance and I'm palpating her triceps. After completing the special tests, the final thing that I would do would be to screen the neck and the shoulder, as well as perform a neurovascular exam. So this completes the elbow examination. Um, hopefully this has given you confidence to be able to perform a physical examination and determine some uh, differential diagnoses that you feel uh, comfortable with. When I'm examining a patient in uh, my rooms, um, I do it in a similar manner, but a somewhat uh, cut down manner. So I'll just get, take you through that now. 
Danny, can I just get you to face me? Hi, Danny. Do you mind if I examine your elbow? Fantastic. Aquium. I'm looking around to see whether or not there are any splints or aids. Danny, can you show me your hands? Fantastic. Move your arms out to the side. Good. Touch your elbows onto your shoulders. Fantastic. Show me your elbows. Show me the backs of your hands. Fantastic. Come back down to this position. Fantastic. Turn your hands all the way over. Fantastic. Are you painful anywhere? I'm just feeling the condyle, the ulnar nerve, triceps. You tell me if you're painful anywhere. The ulnar humeral gutter, the lateral epicondyle, radial head, the radiocapitella joint. You painful there? You were earlier. So that's good. Fantastic. Um, are you, can you feel me touching you here? And are you getting any tingling down your hands? No. Can you feel me touching you here? Yeah, can you feel me touching you here? Is that the same as here? And is it the same as here? Fantastic. I'm just gonna put your arm through a range. You just let me hold it there. You tell me if any of it's uncomfortable. Is that sore at all? No, fantastic. Tell me if that's uncomfortable at all. No, fantastic. Um, just put your thumb up to the air. Fantastic, just hold it there, keep it there. Don't let me move it. Fantastic, come back down here, hold that position. Hold it there, keep it there, don't let me move it. Fantastic. Hold it there, keep it there, don't let me move it. Fantastic. Hold that position. Hold it there, keep it there, don't let me move it. Fantastic. And that completes the elbow examination. This presentation forms part of the Adelaide Shoulder and Upper Limb Clinic's online educational series. If you would like to view more of our online education materials, please visit our website, ASULC.com dot com dot au